Hello friends, today I am going to start a complete course on materials characterization. In this video, I will briefly explain some of the materials characterization techniques. So without wasting any time, let's start it. Let's begin this course from structure characterization. It took the ideas and designs of many scientists and scholars to, to produce instruments capable of strong magnification. So initially scientists were utilizing light microscope to see the metal structure at the microscopic level. And we were utilizing two common techniques to find out the average grain size. And one of them was linear intercept method which is actually counting the number of grain boundary intersections by straight test lines. And the second one was the comparison method in which which is actually estimating the grain size number by visually comparing the metal structure sample magnified with a microscope against the standard diagram. Most commonly these light microscopy techniques are used for the analysis of metal microstructure. See, this is the microstructure of a vast alloy which is actually a nickel based super alloy. This image is taken from the bright field microscopy image. In this microscopy, we actually collect the light that is reflected by the plane surface. Thus, this region looks bright, but the light scattered by the rough surface remains uncaptured. So, this, so this region looks dark. The same image has been taken from dark field microscopy. You can see the difference. The bright areas are now dark and the dark areas are now bright. The reason is that in this technique, the light scattered by the flat surface remains uncaptured. So dark field collects the light only that is scattered by stuffness, cracks, pits or any other rough surface. This is the microstructure of pure copper and this is the microstructure of austenitic ferritic steel. These microstructures have been taken from polarization microscopy techniques. In this technique, unpolarized light is first converted into polarized light. This polarized light enhances the image contrast and improves the image quality. This image is taken from bright field microscopy, but you can see the depth of field and resolution is not enough to reveal all of its features. This image is taken from Nomaski differential interference contrast microscopy. It's a technique which introduces the contrast to images of specimens with little or no contrast when viewed with bright field microscopy. In this technique, Unpolarized light is first converted into polarized light. Then this polarized light is sent into Nomaski prism, which then split them into two rays called ordinary ray and extraordinary ray. Use of this light creates such image contrast. To analyze how the atoms are arranged inside the grain. Max von Loewe in 1912 discovered the X-ray diffraction technique. He believes that wavelength of X-rays is approximately similar to the spacing between the atoms. So these atoms can act as three-dimensional gratings and the X-rays are scattered by the regularly spaced atoms. That is why the intensity of the diffracted rays is plotted against the two times of the incident angle. And the analysis of the diffraction pattern obtained from the X-ray diffraction helps us to find out the crystal structure. Like whether the crystalline arrangement is body centered cubic or face centered cubic or any other type of uh, crystalline arrangement. Similarly, lattice parameters can also be find out of the unit cell. And the most important is the identification of phases. Latest surface like expert high score plus allows us to analyze the diffraction pattern to find out the phases present in the material. Finally, the stain measurement and size of particles can also be found out with this technique.
discovery of electrons led the scientists to develop the latest spectroscopy and microscopy techniques by understanding the behavior of electrons when they interact with materials in 1922 auger electrons were discovered this led the scientists to develop the auger electron spectroscopy they are produced actually when a fast moving electron strikes the material surface the upper most layer of about 0.4 to 5 nanometer emit other electrons having less than 25 kilovolts of energy other electrons are produced actually when fast moving electron knock out the inner level electron of the atom to fill this cavity an electron of upper level comes by releasing the excess energy in the form of x ray energy of this x ray is then absorbed by another electron and gets ejected which is known as auger electron so the composition of surfaces is analyzed by measuring the kinetic energy of these electrons as these electrons are coming from the top few nanometers so this technique is best for the composition of analysis of ultra thin layers and nano scale sample features the escape depth of secondary electrons is approximately 2 to 50 nanometer and they have energy less than 50 electron volts these secondary electrons are used in scanning electron microscopy to produce high spatial resolution images the first ever commercial scanning electron microscope was made in 1965 these secondary electrons are produced when incident electron strikes the loosely bound electron and knock out it this ejected electron is known as secondary electron these secondary electrons provide the information about surface morphology and topography as they are coming from the top few nanometers now the question is that how secondary electrons produce dark and white contrast in the images the answer is the edge effect to explain this effect let's imagine a surface having edge and flat part when high energetic electrons strike the edge part you can see how electrons are emitting from the surface but in case of flat surface only few electrons are capable of leaving the surface that is why more secondary electron leave the sample at edges than in flat areas leading to increased brightness there back scattered electrons are produced from a depth of 0.5 to 1 micrometer having 50 to 5000 electron volts of energy these back scattered electrons are also used in scanning electron microscopy to produce compositional contrast these back scattered electrons are produced when the electrons in the primary beam travel close to the atom's nuclei their trajectory is deviated due to the force they feel with the positive charge in the nuclei the stronger the nuclear charge more electrons will scatter back that is why elements with a high atomic number gives more back scatter electrons and looks more bright when viewed with the back scatter electron mode This is the microstructure of aluminum copper based alloy. This image is taken from back scatter electron imaging. You can see the dark regions are mostly aluminum which is actually lower in atomic number than compared to bright regions those have mostly copper having higher atomic number. So elements with high atomic number gives more back scatter electrons and looks more bright. To find out the exact composition of each phase at this microscopic level we may utilize different spectroscopy techniques like energy dispersive spectroscopy or uh, wavelength dispersive spectroscopy Those spectroscopy techniques and many other spectroscopy techniques will be discussed in the next part like transmission electron microscopy scanning tunneling electron microscopy atomic force microscopy emission spectroscopy so the next part is going to be very interesting so friends please stay connected with me